If you're facing challenges with the criminal justice system, it's really crucial that you spend as much time as possible learning why the decisions you make very early are going to have an influence on how you get out of the system at the soonest possible time. My name is Michael Santos. I served 26 years in federal prison and I work now pretty much every day trying to help people understand the system and understand what steps they can take to move toward a better outcome at every stage of the journey. And I'm really fortunate to be working with a great team of people, all of whom went through the criminal justice system. Um, but on our channels here, whether it's on YouTube or whether it's on iTunes or whether it's on um, our LinkedIn page or Facebook page or on our website at prisonprofessors.com, you can get an abundance of free information that will help you work toward a better outcome and really understand why you should be making decisions today that will influence your life in the weeks, months, years, and decades ahead. And since this is one of the first videos I am making in my new home studio, I thought I would just kind of show you what it looks like. So this is a camera that I have behind me. And if I turn around, now I, I think I am looking at you at this camera, but also super cool about this new setup is I can show you, uh, I can also show you some of the, um, the, the resources that I'm going to be talking about. And today we are going to be talking about the First Step Act and you. What do you need to know about how your behavior today is going to influence your journey, not only in prison, but potentially uh, help you advocate for yourself and help you advocate or, or persuade other people in the Bureau of Prisons and outside to advocate on your behalf. I never ask anybody to do anything that I didn't do. And one of the things that I always started with was, was this, this, this mindset that says, regardless of how long I am going to be in prison, Every day I'm going to be working on this principled path that will lead to the best possible outcome. And that's what I think everybody else should be doing as well. Now, but the start of, of working toward that better outcome is really understanding the system. So I am going to uh, try and see if I've mastered or understand this technology here. So I'm going to look down at my camera screen right now and I am going to switch to a different window that I think I can help you see by switching now to camera two. And now I am looking actually at that laptop that I showed you before, whereas you know, when you looked at my screen before, you, you, you could have seen the, um, you know, the, this, this uh, other MacBook Pro. But on this site, what I have done is I've opened up the Bureau of Prisons website. And you can see this website by just looking at BOP.gov. And if you spend time looking at BOP.gov, that's going to be a great resource to help you understand various aspects of the system. So every uh, day they're kind of updating this site with new information, but I, I'm gonna, not gonna pretend there is a, you know, a, 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 an encyclopedia amount of information here. And so um, what is important for you to learn really is to focus on some very specific topics, very specific topics. And today, one of the most important topics that I wanna talk about is the First Step Act. Now, this is the most important legislation, prison reform legislation, that has happened over the past, I would say, 30 years. I, I went into prison in 1987 at a time when we had a different sentencing system in place. This was a pre-guideline era and there was, it was called an indeterminate sentencing stage, meaning that the Bureau of Prisons could um, offer programs and people could participate in programs and based on their adjustment in prison, they would have another body assess whether they are still, whether incarceration is still the best, in the best interest of society. That was the US Parole Commission was that separate body and the U.S. Parole Commission would uh, uh, determine if you, are, if you are better suited to be serving your sentence in the, in the community. And typically, people would serve a third of their sentence in prison, 
and they would serve a third of their sentence uh, on, in the community. And they, if they did well, the other third of their sentence would be credited towards good time behavior and good time credits. So effectively, somebody with a 10-year sentence would serve about three years in prison. Well, in 1987, the Bureau of Prisons did away with the, um, let me make sure, I hope I'm sharing my screen here. Um, but let me go back to, to just talking with you a little bit about what happened in, at the time that I started serving my sentence. Well, at that time, the Bureau of Prisons was, was, um, was, was influenced by an enormous change that went from an indeterminate sentencing system to a determinate sentencing system. And that's known as the new guidelines. And when the new guidelines took effect, they, they influenced anybody that was convicted of a crime that occurred after November the 1st, 1988. I went into the prison system before November the 1st, 1988, so I was serving my term under the old law. And under the old law, there were different um, good time allotments. And good time is really, in my view, in my view, it's a, it's a, it's a misnomer. Good time um, anybody gets it just by avoiding bad behavior, by not getting into trouble. Um, so really what it should be called is the avoidance of bad time, um, which would take uh, good time credits away. But if a person didn't get into trouble while they were in prison or didn't get convicted of getting into trouble while they were in prison, they could earn, they could get credit that would get, result in time coming off of their sentence. I had a 45 year sentence, but the adjustment that I made in prison resulted in me being able to conclude that term in 26 years. So I wanted to get out at the soonest possible time and I adjusted in such a way. Now, when the new law came into effect in 1988, that they did away with a lot of that good time. I, on a 45 year sentence, a person would serve closer to 35 or 36 years maybe more, maybe 38 or 40 years, because they can only get 15% off of their sentence. So it was a huge difference. Um, on the flip side, I probably wouldn't have gotten 45 years under the new law. I may have gotten 20 years or, or 25 years, and I would have served some portion of, of that. But either way, I likely would have served less time. What's important for you to understand is that, and let me try and go back to the... Um, to the, to the uh, Bureau of Prisons website now, is the First Step Act has kind of changed that. So up until the passage of the First Step Act in 2018, a, there were very little mechanisms that would influence when a person would get out of prison. In fact, um, it, there, it has been iterative throughout the implementation of the Comprehensive Crime Control Bill that brought about the sentencing guidelines. When it first started, there was um, the Bureau of Prison wasn't even giving you 15% of good time credits, which is the maximum you could get. Um, you were only getting, um, it was it amounted to about 13%. So after numerous advocacy efforts by um, really courageous organizations like Families Against Mandatory Minimums and others, um, the they, uh, people were able to persuade um, judicial bodies and also the legislative branch kind of changed that. And it was changes that were gradually in incremental steps favorable to people in prison. So it's important to recognize that, that laws change very slowly and the Bureau of Prisons implements the changing of those laws even slower. And we'll be producing a series of videos that will help you understand how this legislation and change is going to really influence your life going in. But what's really important to understand is that because of the First Step Act, you can now have a real influence on when you get out of prison in a much bigger way than existed prior to the passage of the First Step Act. And although President Trump signed the legislation that became the First Step Act law in December of 2018, it took many years before the First Step Act became really practical, practical for people in prison. It's important for you to understand this history because if you don't, you can lose hope and you can see, you can, you can think about that there may be reasons 
um, you, you may not see the reason to build a record that will document why you are an extraordinary case and you've got a compelling story that can result in, in you getting out earlier. The more you understand how this legislation and this law applies to you and how the Bureau of Prisons will interpret this law applies to you, the better prepared you are going to be to build that record. And we want you to build that record. You know, when I started in the prison, in the prison system back in um, 1987, I used to get a lot of stories from people telling me, why are you working so hard uh, when you've got a 45 year sentence? Well, I, although the law didn't provide a mechanism for me to get out of prison, I really believed that I could influence other people to advocate on my behalf if I built a substantial body of work that I documented. You know, you can't fake it. You've got to document your story. And that I never tell anyone to do anything that I didn't do. But this morning, I was on the, conver I was on the telephone with a former warden in the Bureau of Prisons. Um, she had a 30-year career, and, and she now does work with our team. But I, she became an advocate for me about, and during about my 20th year of imprisonment. And had I not sown seeds and documented the seeds that I started to sow, while I was in prison all the way through the journey, I would not have persuaded Bureau of Prison administrators to advocate on my behalf. And so that's what really I want you to be thinking about as you're going into the system or if you're in the system, don't only think about the struggle and the challenge that you're facing today. The First Step Act requires that you start thinking about your future next month, next year five years from now, 10 years from now. The more you understand how to build a record that will, that will work in your favor, the more you are going to have power to influence decision makers down the line. And that certainly worked on, in, to my benefit. That worked to my benefit all the way through the journey and I absolutely know that it can work for you. Now, nobody can guarantee that you're going to get out of prison earlier than what a judge sentenced you to. What I can guarantee is that if you build a record, you are going to be in a far better position to not only advocate for yourself, but persuade other people to advocate for you. That's the real goal. How do you do that? You know, you got to first think of who are the people that are judging you. Who, what kind of person grows up and says, I'm going to build a career in corrections. I'm going to build a career working in the prison system. Start by just kind of contemplating that mindset and you will understand, okay, how did that person's career evolve? That person very likely went into the system maybe just looking for a job, but they, they may have also been people that really wanted to make a change, that really wanted to do something good for society. Um, but while they're in prison, the longer they're there, they can become influenced by the culture of confinement. And historically, the culture of confinement has been a culture of saying no. We don't care anything about your future. We only care about security of the institution. You can't complain about that. You've just got to understand it. You've got to know it. You've got to figure out how am I going to succeed anyway? Those kinds of Socratic questions of what do I need to do today to influence the people that I'm going to meet in the future can be enormously beneficial as you are striving to navigate your way through these difficult challenges ahead. The pathway that I learned from leaders like Nelson Mandela and Viktor Frankl and Malcolm X and Gandhi and so many is to stop thinking about my own problems and challenges, but start thinking about the people I'm going to meet and influence in the future. What do they want? What, what do I have to do to influence them? If you start asking those kinds of questions, you, you, you can start taking the next path and that's to create a plan a plan that's going to help you get from where you are to where you want to go. It's going to help you put priorities in place. So you know, I know I need to do this and then this and then this and then this and then I'm going to have this, right? These tools, tactics and resources that I can use 
to influence the people I'm going to meet in the future. So be thinking about tools that you can develop. Be thinking about tactics you can, you can exercise every single day. Think about the resources you can develop to bring into your life so that you are in a better position to not only advocate for yourself, but persuade the people that are going to have discretion over your future why they should advocate for you. That's what worked for me. Now, I can be t completely honest and say I, I didn't get out of jail one day earlier than if I just spent all of my time watching TV. Um, or, or playing pickleball or whatever. N none of that would have mattered, okay? But the law was different then. The, the First Step Act did not exist then. And the, today it does. It was passed in 2018, but because it was such historic legislation, historic law, that Congress, in its infinite wisdom, gave the Bureau of Prisons a full year just to retrain staff members because it's so different. The law is so different. Let's see if I can um, navigate my way back to the, uh, the, the, the document that just shows the Bureau of Prisons is a massive, it's a massive agency, okay? It is an agency that employs more than 30,000 people. It's a real bureaucracy, meaning that they spend a lot of time in documenting policies and forms and and you know it's a real it's it's the department of motor vehicles times a hundred that's a good way to look at it okay there are policies and forms for everything so because the first step act is such a huge transition from this concept that existed before which is we don't care anything about your life before or when you get out of prison or before you came into prison all we care is about the security of the institution they had to retrain and retool so congress gave them a year so that was all of 2019 to develop a risk assessment tool which we'll discuss a little bit here in this video and to discuss how they should assess the 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 risk of a person in prison maybe going back to prison and so the more a person understands that system the more a person can say okay i know what i need to do and i know what's going to matter so the bureau of prisons of course has a developed a policy and that's this pattern risk assessment and we will create some videos that help you understand because there's an a, there's just a massive amount of information it's like looking at the wikipedia if you look at the bureau of prisons website you're not going to have enough time and if you don't really understand the system you can't really put it into a context that humanizes the 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 the, the reasons for all the reasons to understand all of these programs okay but it benefits every person in prison and so it's important to understand well what is a risk assessment tool and how can i behave in such a way to get the the highest benefit from it and document it and teach people what to do. And, and so this is an area that I spend a lot of time on. It's one of the reasons that I'm working so hard to develop educational content that we can give away because it's a huge governmental shift. And it's really important to me as a person that served a quarter century in prison to do everything I possibly can to help people understand how to qualify for these benefits because the Bureau of Prisons is not really a has not historically been a family friendly organization. Okay, the a person has to learn how to advocate for himself and also how to develop the tools, tactics and resources that will help other people advocate for him. So we want to teach you these 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 strategies that I learned from leaders and that had a huge influence not only on my journey but on 10,000 people plus that I've worked with over the years and that our team has worked with over the years. So, so I'm going to create, we are going to create, our team is going to create a series of articles that really provide <clears throat> provide more, more, not more uh, awareness of the First Step Act. And I'm going to use all of this technology that I've uh, created here to, to try and, and, and share. The, oh, I got to go back to my camera here. 
Um, let's go see if I go back. See, I'm still learning this technology. I never ask you to do anything I didn't do, but I always am striving to learn how to do it better. That's why I've invested in all this technology here because I want to create content every day. And I have a team of great people that are formerly incarcerated. They're going to convert my somewhat rambling words into a story that we hope you can understand. And it's my hope that they will personalize the story of, of, of how this concept of preparing for a better life, for a better outcome, um, would have applied to them at different stages in the journey. I have no doubt that whoever's watching this video has been successful in one area of his or her life at certain times, but something happened and circumstances surfaced that resulted in these people um, making a decision that, the, that led to a government investigation and then led to a, uh, a, a criminal indictment and then a sentence and they're in prison. My job is to show them that the, your, your, the worst decisions that you may have made that brought you in there don't have to define your life. If you learn these, the, this, this strategy of defining the best possible outcome, defining success, and then you can take the next step of setting clear goals that will align with how you define success. And you can move through this course that, that, that we offer for free. You can look at it right on the website of the Straight A Guide that we call the Straight A Guide. And that's, you know, if you've defined success and you've set goals, you move forward with the right attitude. What's the right attitude? It's 100% commitment to success. You then have an aspiration. You can see yourself coming back to society strong with your dignity intact. Three, you then can take action knowing I've got to take these incremental action steps that are going to help me qualify for the best outcome. Then you can uh, create tools that will help hold yourself accountable and document your journey. Then you can stay aware of opportunities. The opportunities that opened for me were available to anybody else in prison. The only difference is, you know, those people didn't get inspired by some of the, the, the early leaders that inspired me, starting with Socrates and, and then going to Mandela and Viktor Frankl and Friedrich Nietzsche and, and uh, Nelson Mandela and, you know, Gandhi and, and Malcolm X and, and Levi Strauss, I think it was his name. So many people helped me realize that it's not really to define myself by the worst decisions I made, but what steps can I take that will bring a better outcome for my life. And everybody on our team adheres to that same message. That's why the next you know, kind of module in our course is authenticity. You gotta be for real. You can't be somebody that fakes it because if you fake it, that's not going to get you the outcome that you want. You've gotta understand these different strategies and what steps can you take to advance your candidacy for success. Um, then, you know, you've got to celebrate every little achievement and it's really hard to do that when you're separated from the people you love and the people who love you. You've got to do this in a strategic way. You've got to sow these tactics. You've got to understand, you know, I'm here today because of the decisions that I made yesterday, but I can start making decisions today that are going to influence where I'm going to be tomorrow. And I'm not, I, you know, I had to do that for 9,500 days but the First Step Act didn't exist back then. It does exist now. So the, the onus is on you to figure out, am I going to invest the time to really understand it? Am I going to invest the time to build a pathway to get a great outcome? If you do, I believe you can influence your, uh, a better outcome for you, a, a better release date. I encourage you to subscribe to us at prisonprofessors.com so that you can get notified of when we publish these new videos. I encourage you to read these blogs. Subscribe if you want to listen to this while you're driving. Listen to us on our iTunes podcast. Or we're now coming out with an app, the Prison Professors app, and I hope that you will download that from wherever you get apps for your smartphone so that you can really you know, demonstrate that you're working hard toward a better outcome. I am Michael Santos, and, and I really want to thank every member of our team for devoting so much time to create this content, helping us create this content that we use to uh, help other people make better decisions. We're always striving to be the change that we want to see in the world. I can tell you there's a little bit of noise out here right now. 
Um, it's, uh, what is it, 7.15 in the morning, and the gardeners are here, so you're going to start hearing a lot more, so I'd better close this video, but I definitely want to thank you for being a part of our community. I encourage you to subscribe and uh, leave comments. Um, I will produce a lot of content. My partner, Justin Paperni, will produce a lot of content. Our team members will produce a lot of content because we are determined to change the outcomes of this system. And we want to thank you for allowing us into uh, your life wherever you get this content. Thanks so much for being a part of our community. I'm Michael Santos with Prison Professors, and we believe in you.